Yo, Elliot, I am 24 years old and born in Germany. First, I want to thank you for sending out your energy to the world and especially to men who just need a kick in the ass to stop looking for comfort. My question is, every time I start looking directly at the world we live in, my mind state of the mind state of my fellow people, I become angry and want to argue with people to bring light into their perspective. Or I isolate myself and stop talking and close myself off. I learned that I can't change people, but I can't let go of this feeling of being woke in a blind world. That's when I hit the weed and go back to the frequency of light. It's a never ending cycle. Please give me some practical advice. So your sense, your senses aren't wrong, but your attachments are, right? So for example, you have a particular sentiment that you're convinced is true, but the rest of the world around you doesn't believe you, right? You're, it's like Noah, right? When the flood was coming, Noah was like, hey guys, like uh, we're living pretty raunchy here and God is gonna, is, is gonna bring vengeance upon us. Uh, there, I caught word that there's gonna be a flood. And so I'm preparing, I'm gonna build this ark. And, you know, and everybody's like, what are you talking about, bro? Shut up, leave us alone. Why are you bothering us? Go build your ark, you big dummy, right? So Noah, even Noah, Jesus even says, a prophet's not a prophet in his own hometown. The people ain't gonna believe you, right? But what did Noah do? He built the ark anyway. He knew he was right, but he didn't need anybody else's approval. He didn't need to convince anybody. What did he do? He opened the door. He said, hey, I just wanna give you a warning. If this is happening, I'm gonna be over here uh, if you want to join me, cool. If not, no worries, right? That's basically how it unfolded. And it's the same for you. Speak your mind. Let your position be known. Let your values be known. Let it know that people know what you believe and what you don't believe, but have zero hangups about whether or not they are influenced by you. You have to be detached. You have to be detached from the outcome. It doesn't mean that you stop. Like you say, you stop yourself, you close yourself off, and then you go to closet and smoke weed by yourself. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about cutting, cutting off, shutting down and going to smoke weed. What I'm talking about is continue to speak out, but don't need anybody to believe you. And you're right. And the thing is, some people, you will never, never change your mind. In fact, I believe that 90% of the population is just bound for hell because they will not change their mind no matter how obvious the evidence is to the contrary of what they believe, right? They, people believe all kinds of perver perverted things. They live in all kinds of weird ways. And I look at people, I'm like, wow, you're an intelligent adult human being, but you believe that Mickey Mouse bullshit and your life is being ruined as a result. But by pointing it out to them, all you're gonna do is piss them off. That's why you argue. And you becoming angry and arguing about with them is telling you something about yourself, that you have an unhealthy attachment to their opinion, their influence, and what they're doing. You can love people. You can pray for people. You can objectively provide a piece of advice, but do not ever hope to change people's mind or to turn people around. All you can do is speak your mind. Do you notice, just using myself as an example, as I often do, do you notice that when I put up my trigger post, I have certain trigger posts, I call them trigger posts because they're the posts that I use to trigger people's reactions so that I can then make an offer, right? If I make an offer with, with a boring post, no one's gonna see it. But if I put up something that's real triggering, usually something political or something that, you know, triggers feminist and effeminate men, if I put up something like that, man, there's a whole flood of anger and hate. And people say like, the worst things to me and about me is crazy, but I don't care. In fact, that's why I do it because I want them to start a conversation so that I can get a lot more uh, responses from that post. And then guess what happens? The people that resonate with what I'm saying, like you, they see that post and they're like, I think Elliot's right. Even if 90% of the people are having a hard time, hissy fit, panties in a bunch, shitting themselves and crying like big babies, there's that just, I just need a few people that are like, I think this guy's right. And that's all I'm looking for. I put my message out there and I don't try to convince anybody of anything. 
people want me to convince them when I put up those trigger posts sometimes. They're like, Elliot, explain. I don't do any fucking explaining. If you want, to, if, if you want me to explain, <laughs> that's going to cost you. I'm just triggering you, right? And maybe I should explain. Well, guess what? If you're not, and this is just me, this is my arrogant attitude. If you're not convinced already, or if you haven't taken time to explore that, or if this is the first time you're hearing it, about it and you, you're having a hard time with it, then I don't need you and I'm not interested in convincing you. I'm not convinced, I'm not interested in convincing anybody of anything. And if you notice, that's what the, this whole program, I don't convince you guys of anything. You guys come into this program because you're already convinced. You already recognize that I could be a stronger man in my life and this world is going down a effeminate rabbit hole is making men weak and women are confused. The whole world is fucking confused. You can't see that the world is confused and that it's men's responsibility to pick up our swords and start slaying again like we once did. Then I don't want to convince you because you're blind, right? And you can't convince a blind person that this is red. He can't see, bro. So that's kind of where it is a lot of times. They can't see. So why are you arguing with him about the fact that this is red? Can you actually explain what red is to a person who can't see? No, it's, uh, how do you describe it? It's a combination of, uh, it's red. But if you can't see, that means nothing to you. Most people can't see. And you gotta, you have to accept that. There's another one, you know, I'm just pulling out Bible quotes and shit, and I'm not even really good at this. I'm just, just concepts I remember. But there's this concept that some wood is made for the fire. Did you, I, I don't know where in the Bible that is. Some of you guys are smarter than me. You could probably tell me. But in the Bible somewhere, God says that some wood is made for the fire. Some wood is made for fire. Or some of the seeds that the sower casts are made for the weeds or made for the birds or made for ro rocky ground. Do you know that one, the story of the sower? This is a good one. This relates to you. The story of the seed sower. I think Jesus tells a story where there's this guy. He's, he, he owns a plot of land or whatever. And he's got a bunch of seeds and he's sowing the seeds, right? What are you doing? He's spreading the seeds out. He don't have a roller. You got to go like this. And the story is, hey, look, he's spreading all those seeds, right? He's being him. He's doing what he needs to do. He's doing his job. He's doing the work. But he also understands some of those seeds are going to fall on rocky ground and they're not going to grow. The sun is going to burn them up. Some of those seeds are going to fall where the birds are and the birds are going to take it away. Some of those seeds are going to grow a little bit, but then they're going to fade out and die. The sower of the seed just needs to know that. I'm a sower of seeds. You're a sower of seeds. I spread seeds. Some of it's taken away by the, the weeds. Some of it's taken away by the birds. Some of it lands on, on fertile soil. That's all you're interested in, just like the sower. All you're interested in, all I'm interested in is fertile soil. If you're a rocky soil, you're weedy soil, you're sandy soil, you're shitty soil, and I drop my seed on you, I have no expectation. That's the way I think you should have it also too. Don't argue with people. I never argue with people online, man. I think that probably triggers people even more. I do not argue with people. If you can't see, that means you're blind. It's not my job to help you see. You know why it's not my job? And this is, look, people can argue with me. I understand that. But if I'm trying to make a proposition, I'm trying to prove a point, which I'm not, um, then you need to explain. No, I don't need to explain. You know why? Because if you're really interested, you'll go look it up yourself. I recommend books. I, rec I use certain keywords that you can go into Google and you can look up, right? I recommend certain YouTube channels. I give history lessons on this stuff. My whole 21 convention talk last year was on Marxism, right? And how it's play, played itself out in the West, right? If you're really interested in what I have to say, go watch that video. I give you the whole history of it. And the history goes even deeper. My point is that if you're really interested, you'll try to find out. These people don't want to know. They don't want to know. Spe uh, I'm going to stop there because I'm going to start talking about the medicine, the medication, the forced medication. The, if anybody has taken the medication, that's confirmation bias. They will not change their mind, right? There's people that I know in my life that have taken the medication and it's like the Kool-Aid, right? They've taken the Kool-Aid, right? They've taken the Kool-Aid shot. There's a lost cause because if you start trying to convince people that they did something wrong, you're attacking them personally, right? Anybody who's taken the medication is a lost cause. They just have to see for themselves. I don't think m most people are humble enough to say, oh, damn, I didn't really think that one through or I was behaving based on fear. And now I'm enlightened to something new and I'm gonna change my mind. 
Most people can't do that. Most people can't change their mind. You know, one thing that pisses people off about me more than anything, I change my fucking mind. If I'm introduced to new ideas, new information that is to upgrade where I currently am, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change my mind. But people don't, they can't not only not change their own mind, but if you change your mind, they have a hissy fit. They can't, they can't figure it out. Normalcy bias is a problem. Normalcy bias, you gotta be flexible. So that's it, man. That's my opinion on that. And you really, my practical advice is just keep doing what you're doing, but have no hangups about it. Have no neediness about it. Don't need to change everybody's mind, man. Let them be, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.